I'm going to call the meeting to order. Um, got the agenda handy? Wait a minute. Here it is. I think it's just the public hearing, but it doesn't start till 5.15. Okay, well, we've also got um, um, an a &R from uh, Bill O'Bear that we put off from a few meetings ago. And uh, I just sent out uh, the ANR. He wants to do a uh, conservation restriction. So we could take a look at that if you want. I, I can't look at it and talk to you at the same. I can't look at it on the iPad and talk to you at the same time. I can put it up on the screen. Yeah. All right. I will uh, share the screen. But it could. It may take a while. Well, you think it's going to be quick? I mean, it's, yeah, cut and dried, basically. Okay. I don't ever remember looking at the NR for more than a few minutes, so. Oh, do I need to, I probably need to let you share screen, Don. Yeah, probably. Uh. I've got it. All right. Uh, is anybody taking minutes? It is for being recorded better than it was last week, last time. So this is recording. Well, can Mary work from the recording? I hope so. Has she been able to access them? Does anybody know? I know Brent asked for the recording a couple meetings ago and I didn't follow up. Well, it wouldn't hurt if somebody took some basic notes, and I better not because I have to recuse myself. Okay. Um, we open the meeting at 5.05. Now we're looking at over there. From Paul Weber Road, this is where the um, West Waitley Cemetery is over on this side. I see. Everybody got this? Everybody seeing this? I see LaSalle's. I think. Yeah. Huh. You see LaSalle and mm -hmm. not Weber ah, Road? Because I'm sharing. It's good to know what I'm looking at. There. Sorry, Don. All right. Are you on sharing now? We're seeing yeah, we, your stuff. Okay. So Weber Road here, north is, is up this way. Uh, this is the way the West Whitley Cemetery. And um, this is a Massachusetts uh, right away city of Northampton for the water department. So here's here's the house, and they want to split out uh, all this for conservation. Uh, restriction. So this will remain in their name and this will remain in their name. Is this the lot that they did as an A&R before to separate out the, the compost farm? No. No, this is a new well, one. I understand it's new, but the one that they're dividing now, is that the one they separated from the compost farm? I can't answer that because I wasn't around when they did it. For the mom, yes, I thought that was pretty recent. It was only, it was only a couple of years ago when he went with Mike Mahar. Um, anyway, I don't think it matters. So this is a conservation restriction, not an agricultural restriction. Uh, yeah. Conservation restrictions are one, the one that they get some money for, right? Well, both. Oh, well. It's... It says conservation restriction exclusionary. Okay. Versus an APR, AP, an agricultural preservation restriction. Yes, you get paid for it. APR has to be managed by as yeah. farmland. It's, it's different than this is a conservation restriction. It's just on your land. It's yeah. just on the deed, right? I can't, I, yep. can you, I can't see the frontage numbers. Uh, hold on a second. 
find my so we've got uh, 350 feet here and 189 plus 123 188 so we've got 300 feet or so on each 250 and 300. Okay, it's on a public road. It's not straight access. No, this is um, this is access for for the town of uh, Northampton. No, I know, but you can access it from the. It's it's readily right. accessible from the road. Yes. Yeah, there's a break in the stone wall down here, and then they can get in on the uh, Northampton Road as well, and also where the cemetery road comes in. I move that we accept the ANR. Do I have a second? I'll second that. I'm sorry, Brant. Did do you have you done enough of these to know? You, you might have questions. Brant, you're muted. was so brilliant what I said, but- um, uh, Dang, I, I wish I hadn't missed it. Yeah, no, I know, me too. Um, so yes, I've not done any of these before. So I, I understand that the motivation is income for the person putting the land under this restriction, is that correct? Right. Well, actually, Bill O'Bear is a major conservationist. I suspect it's more. Okay, I don't, I don't mean to suggest that it's purely pecuniary. Um, is it irrevocable? Yes, well, you what he's doing is creating a new lot. And it's not guaranteeing that it's gonna be a buildable lot. Okay. I think that the lot behind it is already where it says barn directly behind it is already under either APR or conservation restriction. Well, the whole thing does say there's a conservation restriction and exclusion area in that lot behind where the book, where the, it, that encloses the barn. Yeah. So, so that's, that pre-exists. So we're dealing with this 1.677 acre lot to the east, I guess. Yes. Yep. And and all we have to do is decide if it qualifies as under the provisions for subdivision approval not required. And basically those are that it's accessible from a public way. Mm -hmm. um, and it is. <laughs> Namely Weber Road. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cause to the east, that's, that's a right of way, but it's not an active roadway. The, the, and it, um, doesn't, it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah, but okay. yeah, you're right. It's not an active roadway. Okay. All right. Although it is an active roadway when it goes off, veers off here a little bit to the Southwest. Sure. And actually from our point of view, the purpose doesn't matter either. It's, it's whether it's eligible to be divided this way. Got it. It's basically saying you don't have to go through a whole subdivision approval, which is a very cumbersome process. Okay. All okay. right. I'm with the program. Okay, well, I've um, been moved and seconded by Sarah. We approve this. Uh, do a roll call vote. Sarah? Aye. Don, yes. Aye. Tom, yes. Judy? Yes. Yeah. Uh, Brent? Yes. Okay, the motion uh, passes unanimously. And it's now 515. Okay, so um, we're going to start the public hearing um, site plan review for Whateley 
Real Estate LLC, application for indoor and outdoor marijuana cultivation at LaSalle Forest Property, 25A LaSalle Drive. And Please. yes. Good evening for the record, Sophia Bitsis from R. Levesque Associates here on behalf of Waitley Real Estate Holdings, LLC. Uh, before you, as uh, previously stated, uh, for a site plan review of an indoor cultivation facility to be located at 23A LaSalle Drive in Waitley. Um, since the last meeting, there has been um, a few, uh, some movement in the project. If I could just recap quickly, um, the community host agreement has been approved uh, and signed off by the Board of Selectmen as of the end of December. Um, we have also reconvened with the Zoning Board of Appeals on the special permit for this uh, petition as well. Um, we had a, a great meeting last week. Uh, we do have a site visit scheduled and uh, the next meeting scheduled for the first week of March. Um, we had presented both our updated two narratives that have also been provided to this board as well as updated site plans. So if I may through the chair, if I could share my screen, um, just to kind of point out the updates for the site plan. Uh, that'd be through Sarah. Well, yeah. we should welcome Mary. You're doing minutes, right? <laughs> All right, let's see. Hopefully this will work here. Well, can everyone, well you're can't, excuse me, can everybody see and hear Mary? Yep. Yep. Okay. I got the first 15 minutes for you, Mary. Okay. I don't know. Do you guys see site plans? We're good. Okay, perfect. Um, so let me just go make sure they're to scale here. So um, we through the um, community meeting that we had and previous both planning board and zoning board of appeals uh, meetings, we've had several comments from the abutters um, and or board members. So we have made some improvements to the plans to hopefully address some of those concerns. Um, I will zoom in a little bit. Um, so one of the items yeah. was um, the adding of the vegetative buffer. So we have proposed arborvitaes to be along the uh, visual areas um, to be make it more aesthetically pleasing um, to the abutters as well as changing the chain link fence proposed to a six foot uh, vinyl fence proposed around the perimeter of the um, indoor cultivation facilities, still including the existing greenhouses as they sit currently on the LaSalle property. Um, but providing a more um, aesthetically pleasing buffer. Um, I believe those were the only site plan updates that were made. Um, we also provided two updated narratives um, to this board and to the ZBA addressing not only the special permit criteria, but also the um, table use regulations and requirements to allow locations for marijuana establishments, as well as the design standards. Um, it's up to the board if they'd like us to go through item by item or if you guys have had a chance to review the updated narratives, however you would like us to proceed. Um, Before you start discussing, I think I should say that I have to recuse myself. Uh, LaSalle's are relatives of close relatives. And so Mary, would you get that on the record, please? Absolutely. <clears throat> Do you, in, in recusing yourself, are, are you not allowing yourself to ask questions or just you're going to be mute on this? I'm going to try to be mute. <laughs> okay. I, I would be happy to answer procedural questions if, if that, those come. That, that's what I'd like from you. So thank you. Okay. Um, so I've looked this over. Does anybody else want to go through it bit by bit? Uh, one thing in the change is that you're proposing arborvitaes. That's correct. It would be lovely to have more of a mixed variety of plants in front there, and particularly native and to some would be better. Arborvitaes are... That's a whole lot of arborvitaes. It is, it is, yes. And we'd be more than happy if you'd like to condition specific species uh, proposed, we'd be more than happy to accommodate those. Yep. That would be great. I would, yep. that's a condition I would like to further. Absolutely. Explain. Yep, no worries, thank you. 
So we, we will discuss um, what we'd like to see there, Sophia, and get back to you, okay? Yep, absolutely. All right, thanks. Yep. Are there any additional questions or however you'd like to, to proceed? I can just- Can you go over the energy plan in more detail? Energy so reduction I'm, plan? Yep, so I'm gonna turn that over to Neil, actually. Um, Neil is actually on and part of the team as well, so I'll let him elaborate a little bit more on that. How are you? Um, yeah, basically our goal is to operate as uh, high efficiency uh, as possible. It reduces costs and preserves the environment. Uh, to that effect, we're gonna be getting uh, LED lights instead of uh, more energy consumptive lights like um, uh, like sodium hal halide lights and uh, uh, you know kind of like incandescent based lights, large ones. And um, uh, we're also going to be employing, um, uh, we're, we're looking into a few different systems to uh, cli you know employ climate control within the greenhouses and uh, energy efficiency is our top priority. One thing that we're strongly considering is um, is using the uh, the uh, ground temperature um, in order to the stable sub uh, below you know below the free frost line or whatever you know, below four feet down using that temperature to um, to uh, 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 lower the cost of heating uh, the greenhouse in the winter and cooling it in the summer as well. Um, is there anything else specifically that I could uh, uh, speak to that you have a question about? Lighting and energy and just there wasn't, it says that a plan is required and it, this seems a lot of proposed things, but I didn't know if there was anything more set. And particularly, um, there's a lot of push on solar. Do you have any plans on solar? I, I'm very pro solar. Um, I definitely want to install uh, install solar uh, if and where we can. Um, and uh, we have to obviously make sure that that's cleared and, and allowed. And we certainly would uh, would want to install solar. I, I, I believe I talked to the, uh, the guys about that too much yet, but. Um, but that's something that I really want. Okay, so there isn't like a plan of line by line, this is happening, this is happening, this is happening. You're not quite at that point yet? No, in the initial phase, we, we, we need to, we, we have a plan to get to revenue um, and we want to get to the point where, we're, where we um, can fund ex projects that are, that you know, require more, more capital with revenue that we're, we're receiving. If that makes sense. So we're just going to start with we're going to start with one greenhouse and then add and then fill another one and then another one and another one and go progressively in order to um, in order to sort of make make all of this happen. So are we confining our, our review to the one greenhouse you're starting with? We're talking about the facility as it stands now, including all uh, five greenhouses that would be within the proposed fenced-in area. So, um, if I could just clear. What, what, I'm, what I'm getting at is how do we how do we evaluate a site plan review in toto if you're only focusing on one part and don't have the details for the balance? So if I could just clarify quickly. So um, what Neil is referring to is it's gonna be a phased approach. The site plan as submitted is for all of the greenhouses, all five greenhouses. Um, in its entirety, there is going to be a phased approach, though they are going to start first with green. They're not going to do all the greenhouses all at once. So they're going to start with greenhouse two, bring that one up, start growing in there. Then they're going to do greenhouse one and they're just they're not going to do all of them at the same time. So not all five greenhouses are going to be started initially, but it, it, this the proposal before this board is for all five greenhouses. It's just not going to be all done at the same time. So at, at what stage would solar be implemented? Uh, Chris, do you have any idea to that effect? Yeah, again, we have a, a couple investment groups that are, are interested again, and they're they're asking similar questions. And I think we are looking to build these out, you know, in a in a reasonable and smart manner, which allows us to properly control costs and yield to make sure this is a, a viable project. So, um, with with regards to solar and Neil's commentary, if if we're able to get to revenue quicker, 
and have excess cash flow and we've built out the greenhouses, I think that's when we would step up and do additional capital investments that would reduce our our costs and things of that nature. And that, Judy, does that then constitute a, a change in the site plan? If, it, if it's already not on record and planned out? Yeah, it would be a whole nother site plan application. So, so and have, so I think understand. unless it's solar on top of the buildings themselves, it would have to be an AR2, which right. all of this is essentially an AR1, so. So for the current plan, there'd be no solar in our plan, but yeah, it would well, be- What I'm getting at is that-, that it's, it's beyond the be, scope of this. Right, so if it is going to be installed, you'd have to come back and the neighbors would have an opportunity to review the site sure. plan and, and so on. Yep, no problem. Understood. Understood. Of course, the, the initial solar installation, we do have a lot of roof space that probably but we probably have, honestly, we probably have enough roof space to put enough solar panels to cover a whole greenhouse. We, we have quite a bit. Um, so, um, you know, we would start with that, obviously, you know. And the roof, 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 roof space system. is not subject to site plan review. That's, that's considered a building inspector issue. It's not a zoning issue. Yeah, so I think the solar commentary maybe took us a little bit off off topic. I think right now it's not in our current plan. I think we would do it at a later date, and we'll certainly follow all the requirements uh, to get that done. Um, but it wasn't in our current plan. So, do you have an energy plan? Yeah, because we're asking for one that proposes reductions in standard usage. I mean, I've heard it verbalized, but nothing specific in this for for instance your your geothermal is that going to be hot with water geothermal that's what we're considering yeah uh, there's a company called series that um they run pipes underneath the underneath the ground and uh they circulate the water and that uh once the water comes out of the out of the subter subterranean pipes the temperature of those is relatively stable all year long and you only have to heat it so much or cool it so much to uh, to cool or, or heat the greenhouse. So um, uh, that, 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 that's, that's kind of how that system would work, the, the geothermal one. The heat, I, the heat oh, pump. go ahead. Basically, it's a heat pump. Yeah, and it's, but it's working less hard because you're, you're, you're pumping water that starts at a warmer temperature. Right, or a more stable temperature. Yeah, yep. So do you have a detailed energy efficiency plan? The companies that install these systems um, on a project like this provide a lot of, a lot of info towards that. Um, that's, I kind of, I have some stuff sketched up, but the real professional plans come largely from them. And we're working with them right now on, on those. Because that is item number six. Detailed energy efficiency plan. And if I may, if I may add on to what, or, or kind of pursue the same thread that I think Sarah is, is in your narrative, in the bylaws, there is a, a line about um, generating at least half of the um, ex anticipated energy on site, right? It's right there, yes, in item six. So cultivators in buildings and greenhouses shall generate a minimum of 50% of their projected energy use on site where feasible. Of course, where feasible is rather a big kind of loophole. So there's partly a question to my fellow board members about how the board has dealt with that in the past. But I would imagine that you, knowing the size of your greenhouses and the expected lighting even low energy lighting that you're going to put in there can have a reasonable estimate on a daily, weekly, monthly basis of how many kilowatt hours you would be using and you would be able to at least speak to um, how you might uh, be able to generate at least 50% of that on site where feasible. I think that might be one aspect of what Sarah is getting at without trying to put words in Sarah's mouth. Yeah, I'm looking, it says we're going to have a plan of some sort. And yes, 
you can grow into things, but it doesn't have a very specific yeah, so if you, plan. You're, you're and it certainly you, doesn't say this is what is going to decrease it by such and such percentage and no real details there. Okay. So I think it could be an excellent for us to go and, and specifically document in review and, and maybe get more specific with that plan and come back with that. Yeah. That would be great. That would, yeah. We'll ask Mary to condition that for you too. I would say that it doesn't have to be nailed down, but you know, to, just to describe the systems you're going to be using, yeah. um, and uh, you know, not you don't need nuts and bolts description, but just a specific general. How does that sound? Yeah. Great. That sounds good. Thank Thank you. You. As a, again, as a friendly amendment, I would suggest and some kind of um, data informed estimate of your projected energy use. And if you're doing this in phases, you know, in your first phase, what's your, you know, annual energy use projected to be given all your lighting and all of that. And then what's your projected, assuming you install various systems you're thinking of for phase one, how much of, how much energy might that generate to offset your anticipated use? Understood. Thank you. Thank you very much. Any other questions from the board? I do have a question about the fact that, um, and I know this, I think this is a, a, a later phase and maybe we're not going to deal with this here or now, but you're talking about a future expansion into outdoor cultivation. Is that correct? No, no. Uh, not at this time. Okay. Nope. It All right, been an a, idea. Yep, it had it, been an idea, but currently the, under this current proposal, there is no outdoor proposed. Okay. And, and it would clearly be another review process if Absolutely. you were going to. Yep, amongst other permitting authorities. Yep. Good. Okay. So we're strictly dealing with indoor cultivation at this point. And yep, right. in the existing greenhouses. Okay. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions from the board? I think I'm good. We'll open the floor to uh, anyone from the public that would like to chime in. Hi, Mark. I'm Ann Lomley. I'm one of the abutters. If I could ask a question. Um, yeah, Ann, go on ahead. Your site plan, thank you. On your site plan, on the part of your property that faces the river, so I guess it's the back, it looks like you are going to have that fence, the um, vinyl fence, I think. Are you also going to have shrubbery and that kind of thing in the back? It doesn't look like it from the plan. I'm just asking. No, we're visible. just proposing for it to be visual from, from the abutters um, on the side, I guess, on the, on the uh, um, I guess I don't know what, if it's the southerly side. Yep, the southerly and the easterly side at the, at the matter. We don't want to obstruct the, the wetlands at all um, by adding additional plantings and invasive species and all that fun stuff. Okay, I, I was curious though, because I'm the abutter across the river and the beavers are taking down a lot of trees. So I was just curious if yep. <laughs> um, you put plantings that were native or something, that would be awesome, but I'm not saying it has to be. Yeah, that, that would put us into conservation jurisdiction as well. Um, so we okay. hope to not disturb the, the wetlands at this point. Okay, but the fence doesn't disturb the wetlands because it's Correct. not. Okay, all right, thanks. Mark, you had a question? Yeah, more, more just a comment too, um, just so the board knows it. My name is Mark Sobolski um, and I'm speaking on behalf of my mother and father, Alec and Teresa and my sister, Christine, who's also online here. Uh, my parents currently live at 13 LaSalle Drive um, and this property has been in our family for over 55 years. Um, and just during this process, it's gone over for about four months. Uh, we've come out and conveyed our opposition to this project uh, to both the Board of Selectmen and the ZBA. So just wanna make sure the planning board uh, had a record of our views as well. Um, we've got concerns about whether a, a cannabis cultivation facility really belongs in a residential neighborhood like ours. Um, and we've got you know, concerns around safety and security, uh, potential harmful odors, as well as potential impact on property values. Um, now, having said all that, you know, I, I do wanna say, you know, we've gone through this process for the past four months. Um, and I do want to sort of say also that the folks from Canvas Select have been very responsive to us, um, you know, in terms of adding the, the lattice fencing and the, 
and the plantings. It's a real aesthetic improvement. Um, they've also put in the fact that they're going to screen the greenhouses at night um, and have minimal lighting for security purposes. Um, you know, we still are concerned about odor control. And I know that they're engaging with a, uh, with a company to develop an odor mitigation plan for the property. Um, so I guess given all that bottom line, while we still wish it wasn't happening, uh, you know, we do understand that cannabis is a growing industry, you know, and certainly that John LaSalle, you know, would like to retire and move on from the floral business, um, you know, and, and based on our experience with the town so far, you know, and certainly from what the questions we're hearing tonight about, you know, energy efficiency, um, you know, and, and, the, and the, the good questions that you folks are asking, the town really just seemed to be looking out for a butter's interests. Um, you know, and, and again, Canada Select is being responsive. So for that, we're appreciative. So thank you. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Anybody I would very much like to go over the odor plan criteria. Certainly. Um, so as, uh, as Mark mentioned, yeah, we are going to engage uh, with Byers Scientific, which is uh, an odor mitigation company that's worked with uh, major cannabis cultivation uh, operations in California, including Canopy Growth, which is, uh, I believe, the largest in the country. Uh, if not certainly one of the largest. Um, they have a couple of different uh, strategies towards um, uh, towards odor mitig mitigation. The first strategy is using sealed greenhouses where you have negative pressure. Uh, and the second strategy um, is to use carbon filtration. And then the third one is to employ um, uh, um, uh, odor mask uh, like uh, based uh, systems where uh, an additional uh, sort of anti-odorant spray is sprayed in the vicinity around the greenhouses and it works off of sensors. They um, have plans for monitoring the odor and things like that. Um, they do uh, charge for to officially to officially engage with them. They will provide full odor a full odor plan and materials to the town as part of what they what they do. But we. Um, we just were uh, we wanted to just uh, speak with the zoning board and, and you guys at the planning board before we went ahead and engaged with them. Um, as we spoke with the zoning board before, they, they thought it was a good idea. And so we plan on doing that. Uh, we just wanted to speak with you first as well. Yeah, we just wanted to make sure we have um, the exact what, what each board is looking for specifically. So when we do engage them and, and, and make that investment. We're getting exactly what you need and we can actually probably have them our goal is to have them join these meetings and answer questions and, and provide a complete plan to to both boards as well have you um considered using a low low fragrant or aromatic species or varieties of marijuana i know in some of our other projects um we've looked at species that are, are varieties that are not as aromatic Certainly, um, uh, we will do whatever is, is necessary to keep the odor from being a problem. That's our main concern. If we are able to grow more aromatic, more pungent uh, strains, but because our odor mitigation is so good that they still cannot be smelled, then that's a double win for everybody, I think, because those are also desirable, as, as desirable as they are undesirable to some, as they are undesirable to others, I suppose. But um, but uh, we definitely want to be able to leverage uh, the unique unique capabilities that uh, strong odor mitigation strategy might afford us in order to make sure that we're a success because we will have to uh, pursue every niche that the market um, demands in order to to survive in this uh, in this industry it's it's growing fast but it's also you know it's also gearing up pretty fast so we have to really be strategic well there's another grow facility that we're looking at right now that uh, has agreed not to do uh, a variety called skunk and uh, evidently it's pretty hard to, to mitigate that one but they're outside, Don. That's and they're in. They're not in glass greenhouses. So I mean, this is a little different situation. Well, they're. Yeah. So I mean, yes. If we have, as per our bylaw, no odors at the property line, 
So that's, that's, our, that's our main thing our, we want to commit to is making sure that there's no smell at all. If any strain does cause a problem, we certainly would not grow that strain or grow it in such small quantities where it wasn't a problem. Sometimes you can get away with just having a couple of plants that are more pungent and it's not enough to be a problem. So, you know, you don't necessarily have to completely grow none. You know, it can, it can, you can do a, a variety of things. Oh, well, this is from my, our fellow board members. We had a condition in the other project we're looking at about um, having the, the, the opportunity if um, odor becomes an issue of uh, taking steps to deal with that. Uh, for consistency's sake, do we want to apply that same condition to this project so that we have a standard across the township? Yeah, just I would like to say yes to that. And what I'll say is in this, in what Tom is bringing up is a lot of discussion that we had related to the an outdoor cultivation operation where, you know, we can say in the bylaw that odor shall not be detectable at the property line, but you know, there's wind, you know, stuff blows around. And if it's growing outdoors, uh, even the best of intentions may be undermined by a strong wind in the wrong direction, right? So we, in that particular case, we, we, we wanna be supportive and work with the cultivator they're going to take all kinds of steps. Again, that's an outdoor operation and yours is an indoor operation. But we kind of looked at this to say, well, we, we even if you do your best and you're gonna plant the, you know, the more aromatic uh, varietals further away from abutters and so forth, we needed a, a way to kind of a, uh, a way to say that if we do start to have problems, complaints from abutters and neighbors, then we, we as a town want to have recourse to take action at that point. And so we had some language. So I think what Tom is suggesting is that our board may for this project, which again, indoor, in, in theory, you should be able to do a much better job Come on. At, uh, at odor mitigation than an outdoor cultivation operation. Um, but we might still want to be consistent in our approach to you with that same language. Um, and what we should do, do we have, it would be good not to surprise um, Canis Select with what that language is. Can we readily show them or share with them? Maybe we're not going to make all of our decisions tonight, but it would be good to make sure they know what that language was. I think they're, they've already promised to come back with information so we could get it to them in the meantime. Yeah, it's just like a one line condition. Yeah, I think I actually saw it on another project. So we, we fully understand that and, and would expect that if, we're, if, if it's becoming a problem, there'd be, you know, people, people have recourse and want to be able to shut it down or, or do something similar. So we, yeah. we get that and our goal is to have the best odor plan and, and have no order whatsoever. That's and we don't want to get into shutdown operations either, right? We don't want to be yeah. threatening businesses that are going to establish themselves and hopefully be profitable and be good for our community. But yes, when we hear from a, 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 a fellow resident like Mark, um, we do care about the interests of the neighbors, and I, as I'm sure you do as well. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And because oh, you're yeah. indoor, you can have a low, lower probability of hitting that threshold. So it's just something that, that we can have to set a community-wide standard. And I'll, I'll note that uh, Jared has put in the chat, oh, no, he just did that privately to me. I'm gonna just, for the, since this was sent to me privately in the chat, I'm gonna just put this in the chat to everyone, what that language uh, I've, is. I've got the uh, text for that, if you want me to read it off. Okay. I just put it into the chat. So, okay, in the event of complaints of excessive order, that one? Yes. Okay. There it is. Got it. Thank you, Jared. So, right. we addressed, we, we've explored, have we sufficiently, we've explored energy, we sufficiently explored 
um, odor mitigation. Sounds good. If I may just address a question back to Mark. Um, so you mentioned you, your, your primary concerns were um, odor, property value impacts, which, you know, there's a lot, there's a whole thing, you know, we're, we're not, we're, we have a, a particular position on that. Um, but what, what were your other, just remind me what you, your other concerns were. It sounds like your, your, your position is you'd rather not have this, but given all the changes that have been the accommodations and so forth, and perhaps further what you've heard tonight, um, you know, you could live with this. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to put words in your mouth, but. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, I think that, you know, you, you listed odor, you listed, uh, you know, certainly we've talked about odor, we've listed, you know, property values, and granted, I'm not, I'm not familiar with the board's view is on that, but, you know, that, that's a legit concern. You know, safety and security, you know, certainly, you know, a, a marijuana facility, you know, is different than sort of a floral business that's there now. So, you know, there's a reason why there are fences and, and cameras and things like that. So I, I think about, you know, my parents, you know, living there, I do not live there. I, my sister and I, own the property. My parents, you know, sort of, a, you know, my parents live there. So I think about, you know, there's, you know, safety and security. You don't um, want them sneaking in there, right? Yeah, right. Uh, yeah, I, I, I hardly think that would happen. But, uh, but you know, that, those are things I consider too. Um, so yeah, I mean, when I said, and I, that's, that's really all of the two. You know, and, the, you know, and, and, you know, I, I do want to say, you know, the Canada Select folks have been very you know, sort of responsive, you know, but at the same time, this is a, a new venture for them, you know, and I think, you know, they've had certainly success in other areas and, and that, and honestly, you know, a, a new business coming in with such a very, you know, with, with, with frankly, with not a great track record of having, you know, I, I think, I believe the town of Waitley has approved, you know, maybe three or four of, of businesses like this and they haven't really, you know, gotten off the ground. So, I mean, that there, there's that too. So it's, it's, you know, kind of a whole host of concerns that we have. Um, but I will say, you know, as we've gone through this process, um, you know, like we've been appreciative of what they've done and what the sort of the town is in terms of looking for a butter. So it's not, um, you know, that's, that's that. So it's true. It's like, what, what are we going to do? So. Thank you, Mark. Thank you. And just to re respond to that, we did have a similar um, couple letters that came about at the zoning uh, meeting that we are going to formally respond to before the next meeting and it addressed a lot of those same issues that have come up so there'll be a formal response to that to those items um, that we that we received there so anybody else <coughs> entertain a motion to uh, uh you got something i just have one last i had a a, a recollection and i couldn't find it in the updated documentation. And, and maybe I'm confused, but at one point I thought there was under waste management, there was a plan that at some point involved spraying stuff in the uh, field and that's you know, gone, right? <laughs> yeah, we did away with that after, uh, after it was explained that that wasn't uh, preferred. Yeah, we we, we, <laughs> we went out, we went to a completely different plan where we use filtration and we just reuse all the water. Then that's all, that's it. We just reuse everything. It's completely recirculating. Yeah. You know? Okay. Yeah. All right. Thank you. All right. Then I'm good. Done. Okay. Well, I understand a motion to uh, close the public hearing. Uh, so moved. Do I have a second? Oh, just just a second. We were asking for additional information. Do we close the hearing before we have that information? Uh, I think you want to leave it open until you get the extra. <coughs> yeah, I, yeah. I think um, so we'll continue we, with that. We, we want to have all the yeah. all the information in before we close the hearing, okay. and the, the public can uh, also see the new information before the hearing closes. All right. So we're going to do a continuation of the public hearing. At well, another meeting. Yep. So Sophia will have to request that. Okay. No. Well, 
I, I, I can. That's a, so we request respectfully request a continuance to the next planning board meeting to allow for us to supplement the energy plan as well as the odor mitigation plan. Okay, thank you. So we'll now. And could we can we get copies of the letters that the zoning board has received? I'll send them to you. Thank you. Okay, the uh, public hearing is continued at this point, not closed. So thank you very much. To when? To, to the next? Um, next meeting be okay with you, Sophia? Yep, as long as, uh, Chris, do you have a timeline on the um, odor mitigation plan and the energy? I just wanna make sure that we can sufficiently Yeah, I think the, the next meeting, let's, let's put on for next meeting. We're gonna get in touch Done. with this week. Done, we've already got the Panem and zoning discussions for the next meeting. Is this, do you think this will be too time consuming? It shouldn't be, and, and we're still not sure if, if the Hanum is going to be ready. Oh, that's true. So the next meeting is, is what, the 23rd? Yes. February 23rd? Yep. If it's a Tuesday. Yep. Great. Well, we will, uh, like I said, we'll get in touch with them this week and, and get to work. All right. Great. Thank you for your time. All right. Thank you, Thank you very much, everybody. Thank you very much, guys. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay, so we've got the stuff under other. Is there anything else anybody would like to? Uh... Yeah, I sent a letter around this morning or, or early afternoon about to be sent to the select board. Oh suggesting yeah. we discuss it tonight. Yeah. Um, the solar facility that we, the solar bylaw amendments that we got approved at town meeting, set up a remediation fee for use of agricultural or timber land. And it requires that the select board establish the size of the fee with input in from the CONCOM and the Agricultural Commission. And so I asked Brian what the best way to get them going on this would be. And he suggested we send a letter so this is my suggested way to start the letter. Yeah, I looked at the letter and I think we'd, we'd just go ahead and send it. Anybody else take a look? I, I read it, I guess. Um, do we have anything, I don't even know where to begin with this, but do we have any basis for suggesting what the fee ought to be or how it should? Maybe this is we, none of we our We wrote business. the bylaw, so we didn't. Um, I'm sure we can sit in on the meetings. <laughs> I mean, I think that was part of making it as true. You know, the people who know what this ought to be are the people who are in charge of protecting this land. Yeah. And that's, that's really not us. Okay. All right, because it seemed like I'm sure the they would was, love. It. I'm sure they would love any suggestions anybody had to give. Because <laughs> I don't know where to begin with this, but the letter no, seemed very straightforward. They they, that it was just like, go ahead and do that. You know, we we think this you should move ahead with setting this fee. Well, I, I really think it should be in place before before we get another major solar application. Yeah. Um, would the Conservation Commission be a good source for this? Um, well, the select board is supposed to consult with, the bylaw requires that they select board get input from both the Ag Commission and the Conservation Commission. It seems that the Conservation Commission to be the one that's best suited to come up with, at least know how to go about finding this through other... Um, other well, we've had a lot more land taken from farmland than forest land, but... Yeah. Actually, the APR the APR is much easier because because the state has pretty rigid formulas, um, and they're and the APRs will be cheaper, I think, because the local portion of the of the 
protection is much smaller. It's only 5% of the, the value of the APR. But anyway, I, I think in order to preserve the integrity of the fee, it should be the, these committees who, who opine. Hmm. I'm sure they can hire, they can look for outside help. I mean, they both work with land trusts and that kind of thing. Um, I think from the farmland point of view, the American Farmland Trust would be a good, good source of yeah. information. And John Devine is, is still um, Department of Agriculture, I think. Or... Hmm. So they'll, but I, it's the select board that has to get this ball rolling. Mm -hmm. yeah, well, yeah. I've, got, I've got one other thing under other. Um, Brian would like to, Nicholas was our representative to the Capital Improvement Planning Committee. And um, we need somebody to uh, represent us at that. And what does that involve? Uh, I, about a meeting a year, I think. Now, Brian wants to make it a lot more um, proactive and more time. Would Nicholas be willing to continue and feed back to us? Uh, probably, probably not. <laughs> um, well, we can ask. Well, I, Brian specifically asked me to get someone from the board. Okay. So this would be representing from planning point of view or a financial or? But from planning, from the planning board point of view. Okay. It's a financial committee though. So, but to get, All right. it's, their job is to prioritize the, the future capital. Stuff project. in town. Judy, you're pretty, uh, you cut your fingers in lots of pots. I, I am forbidden from volunteering for anything. <laughs> Go build. It's the rule of the household. Mm -hmm. Excuse me, could I please have, again, the exact name of the committee? Capital Planning? Capital Budgeting, I think. Capital Improvement Planning Committee. Yeah. Thank you. I had to look up the email. <laughs> Brent, can, can I talk you into doing that? You could. I was thinking that with barely a few months of all of this under my belt, you're taking somebody who knows very little and throwing them into another committee. But, well, I'll, but I'll, I'll, I'll tell you a story. <laughs> ten, ten years ago, Paul Floreal, who was then the town moderator, said, uh, could you be on the planning board? And I said, well... Yeah, I could. And he said, oh, by the way, you're going to be the chair. <laughs> I managed to fumble through it, so I think you'll do fine. All right. All right. Go ahead. All right. I won't tell, I won't tell my wife. All right. Thank you so much. But let's hope that the, it, the workload doesn't ramp up too soon this year. It's crazy on campus. All right. Yeah. But go ahead. Throw my name in and I'll do my best. All right. Well, if you can't make something, I will be the alter alternative. Understood. How's Understood. that? That sounds. I think, I'm sure Nicholas would be happy to fill you in on what he knows. And I actually owe Nicholas promise to, um, you know, give me some lessons about how to be a good planning board member. So I need to take him up on that. But it was going to be we're going to sit on his deck and have some iced tea, and he'd regale me on ANRs. And COVID is just like not making that possible. <laughs> and the winter. All right. There's another uh, another other item. Um, and I just want to get this, uh, this thing that came up, Judy, from uh, DNCTC, this information about outdoor cultivation and the various definitions. So you forwarded something on to Brian. I have not seen any response, have you? I haven't either. And I know Jared is still potentially listening in on tonight's call. So I'll just simply say a lot, there's Jared. <laughs> okay, so Jared, uh, 
Jared shared some very useful information. Uh, he went a little bit beyond what I, which is fine. Uh, what I sort of asked for was like, point me to the right places in the CCC, um, you know, regs about indoor and outdoor cultivation, all that sort of stuff. And, and it, it, he went beyond that, but he also provided a, um, what I might describe as a CM, DMCTC point of view, you know, in addition to sharing just like, here's this definition and that definition. And it's good material. Um, but for transparency, uh, it seems like it ought to be shared with the entire board. Now that you've discussed it, it definitely has to be. <laughs> yes. So, um, and it seems like you're, there's, my assessment is that there's nothing in what you shared, Jared, that is, you know, privileged, confidential, and, you know, and that it, it, we, we can simply, in its existing form, with no need for you to do it, take any further action, I'll just circulate that to the rest of the board. And you're presumably okay with that. But understand that, you know, this is like, maybe this is bad on me for potentially putting in you in the position. Now what you've done is be, it, it becomes a public record. Uh, Brent, uh, you sent around a background in terms in CC on Monday. Is that the document you're talking about? Yes, that document was prepared by DMCTC. Right. And you, and you said that in the email. I did. But I sought an opinion from just you, Don, and Judy. Oh, gotcha. So I have, it hasn't circulated to the entire board yet. But now, by opening my big mouth, Tom and Sarah are going to get to see this too. Well, that's this what I said. Stuff. I was pretty sure Brad was going to tell you that anyway. Okay. All right. So, do you want it? What was that, Tom? I'm sitting on the edge of my chair in anticipation. <laughs> you want me to forward it right now? Go ahead. Let's just get that done. All right. I've got it up, so I'll go ahead and forward it. Okay. Appreciate it. I don't know that I have anything else. I'm going to follow up with Sarah and Tom, by the way, just about the, and, pro, and I'm sure Mary, about the, um, my, my little thing about the shared drive. So I'm going to get you some passwords and stuff to connect to it. We haven't really been using it, but at least I'm going to get you connected onto it. It's really easy. Is this easy. OneDrive or what, what is this? Yeah, it's OneDrive. Okay. I'll just send you the, the, the email address that you use to log in and the password to it. Cool. And then we collectively, because it's like even whether it was LaSalle or whatnot, it's just nice to have one place to go looking for all the different documents. And if we, you know, I don't know, Sarah, if you're, are you, have you, have you used Zoom enough to know like how you would go, since you seem to be able to log in to, like to run tonight Zoom, you know how to find the, the cloud recordings and download them? I haven't figured out that much yet. I try not to record any of my Zoom meetings okay. for work. This is the only one I love being on camera for. Because I can at some point show you how to do that. It's very easy, but you have to log in through the browser. Okay. So you got the info you needed from that a couple I don't. months ago. I, oh, okay. I would need, to, for me to do this, I would need to have whatever email address you're using to log into Zoom and the password to run run these meetings. And then I can log in and I could download these recordings and store them on OneDrive or wherever. Don, what's yeah. your... Uh, you Say wanna, again? You want to share that info that you shared I, with me? With I would check with Brian because I think initially they weren't keeping the recordings for longer than six months or something or three months. Um, more important whether that that's still program. true, whether it's true for all meetings, maybe different for public hearings than for right. for other things. What I found was on YouTube. Yeah, but it's not happening automatically. And that none of the, you know, I can't find any minutes of these meetings and I can't find any recordings of these meetings anywhere current. It's just not being done. Mary, can you start posting some of those? 
I, I am, I have gotten behind in writing the minutes. That's why the ones and, and since Jared's, but since uh, Brant's been on, you haven't had a chance to approve them yet. They're still working on them. I will have planned on saying to everybody tonight, you'll have them all by the next meeting. Yeah. Oh, goody. It's because they don't <laughs> exist yet. Okay. But the ones that not all of them. I mean, the, 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 I'll check to see what, you know, if there are any more that, that are approved that I can send to, to be posted that maybe I didn't send yet. That's, but the ones that uh, Jared's mostly talking about that he's been involved in, you haven't seen them yet. What did I miss when I went curfewy? And I hope nobody heard um, me stare at my computer. We were talking about minutes and that I would get them to everybody. No, by I next ended week. up topping out at the uh, in the public hearing. So where did that go? Tonight? Yeah, I went. Oh. Yeah, I disappeared. No, uh, I, I thought you were still are there. Are you sure? Uh, Oh yeah, I was gone. Huh. We um, continued it. We continued till next okay. till the twenty third. Yeah. And okay. they're gonna provide an energy plan and a um odor plan. Okay. Yeah, I left off I disappeared in the middle of odor or towards the end. Okay. So it didn't go on much more than that, just going, we want more. <laughs> Something more than yeah, we got that. Yeah, we talked about the order a bit, and then uh, you know, there we continued it. They're going to provide the odor plan and the uh, power usage or the power okay. saving. Are we going to um, discuss what type of plantings we would want? Since I opened that one. Oh up? yeah, why don't we do that? Um, I think we should we should do that as part of the public hearing and part mm -hmm. of the we. There's nobody here now involved, so I, I think we better wait till next next time. Okay. Um, we, as a reference, we might want to um, present uh, the plan that was done for the project before this one. Um, the NCTC. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Don, I think you might also suggest that they present a formal list of plantings anyway. Because we had this conversation with them, so that, that could be a starting point. I mean, this has been done. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And documented. I don't think their list of conditions, though, had had the names of the plantings. No, but they documented them in their plan. In the, on the plan, yeah. Okay. Jared, you want to speak to this? It, yeah, well, I can. I can just send you the list of uh, planting types that we have. They're on the plan. Uh, I think it's American holly and uh, birch trees. Okay, well, that yeah. would be so much nicer than I think so. Harbor mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Nothing wrong with one or two, but yeah. no row. Well, no, it's no. Their deer food too. I mean, you're you're the yeah, deer, they're, they're, in that in that neck of the woods. They're going to have a deer problem with arborvitae. Arborvitae would be horrible there. Good eating. <laughs> Yeah, if you just send us that email, that would be fine. Happy to. Thank you, Jared. I really do want to run to ground this thing. I'm sorry to be on this, but about the, the these meeting recordings. So Judy, you seem to say something about that I didn't understand about the recordings don't get kept around for very long. So is that I, a policy? I don't know when I, all I know is when I first, the first time I wrote, on the historical commission, we take turns writing minutes. Mm -hmm. And the first time I wrote minutes for a Zoom meeting, I asked how I should reference, I asked Ryan how I should reference the, the Zoom link in them. And he said, well, just put the access information. We're not keeping them for more than X. And I'm not sure now what X was. I think it okay. was, might have been. 30 days. I whether think I that can is, speak to whether that. Whether that's still the policy, whether yeah. that applies to all meetings, um, 
it might be different for public hearings or things like that than it is than, than a historical commission meeting, which never has any outside participants anyway. So, but I, so I don't know what the policy is. I just think maybe we ought to know it before we decide anything. So the, the point that I, I want to make is that like right now, Sarah has turned on throughout this meeting, this whole meeting has been recorded. And that recording, the way she's, you, you did it, Sarah, via cloud recording, right? Like you're not recording on your local machine. We're using the town, a town. I understand that. I do just understand that. It on automatically, Brent. It goes, Amy Schrader at town offices has the, has the I capability see. to access them. Oh, interesting. But so, like, but, yeah. but presumably, even though you, we log in, there's just, so what you're saying is when you log in, Sarah, and start this meeting, recording automatically starts at the same time. I am using the town administrator's login. I understand. Okay, so I mean, this none of this is my personal information. I understand that too. Yeah, but when so you start how the they set it up yeah. and how they access is I different see. than I set up my own personal one. So you don't push, like, you don't turn recording on, it's just on. It comes on automatically, and usually when I'm sitting around for the first 10 minutes, I ready, see. I shut it off, and then I once I let people starting in, I usually remember to turn it back on, unpause it. Because the ideally, you'd think for somebody like Mary, Mary would like to be able to access these recordings and confirm that she got certain things right. And <laughs> Mary is looking totally shocked. <laughs> you know, and it basically turns into just a, a movie that you could right. play on your computer with audio and video, but you'd have to download oh, I like that. Minute. So much better, succinct. Yeah, yeah, well. Well, Mary can ask Amy for them. But I know, Don, you told me to go looking at some place on the Waitley site where yes, meetings or, you know, meeting recordings are supposedly posted. And the last, meeting of the planning board that was posted sometime in like the summer of 2019. Yeah, that's when FCAT was recording them. So um, right now it looks like the only things, I just looked at it and the only things up there are select board meetings. So I think- Which Amy, are broadcast, which are broadcast on FCAT. Yeah. So I think Amy is, is, the, is your answer. Because, Brant, our official, we've never used to record and we never used to have somebody record them, only with COVID. So Mary would always do our paper yeah, minute yeah. and upload them. So, yeah. which I actually, I prefer that method. And, and I don't know if you know, FCAT is the local community cable. Okay. But we right, should well. have more minutes out there other than we've, Mary's gotten them to us, we've approved them and it's and submitted them and certainly- yeah, But not lately. <laughs> right, not in the last couple of months, but our old minute should be on there. Not no? at all. Um, Mary well, probably needs to send, send those in. Because I think February was, of last year was the latest one. The latest one that's posted? Yeah. Well, 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 I'll take care of seeing what else has not, I'll take care of it. Thank you, Mary. Life did go kerfluey after that. Apparently. All right. Like I again, wasn't trying to make a, a federal case out of this, or a, or a no. I mean, you'd like to know county case out of this. <laughs> in history, yeah. But but I thought that if if there was value for reference, if since the meetings are being recorded and we can simply access the recordings and download them and save them for some period of time. It's not hard to do, I believe. And we don't necessarily have to go through Amy Schrader if you can log in with the uh, town administrator credentials. But if no one sees a need for it, I don't necessarily need to worry about it. it Seems like the minutes are the most important thing. I think yeah. those are our, our official documentation. Okay. 
I mean, that is what we vote on. We don't vote on the videos, yeah. or at least we haven't changed the yeah. system yet to that point or protocol. Okay. Harry, January, February, and March are listed on the web webpage so far. So I'll get, well, yes, you're right. There are others that have been approved. Okay. If, I'll, I'll check with Amy, and if she doesn't have them, I'll get them to her. And yeah, the ones that I haven't. No. You'll get them. Really? Come on. Okay. Well, did we lose you again, Sarah? Yeah, I think we lost Sarah again. And that was the sound before. <laughs> we don't have anything else anyway, do we? No. Except she has to log off. Yeah. So so I'm, I'm sorry, but I'm just looking at the Town of Waitley website for planning board meeting minutes. And the only thing there, if you look under minutes for the planning board, uh, 2021 is of course not even listed yet at all. For 2020, last year, there are minutes posted for January, February, and March of last year of 2020. Yeah, well, that's what that's what Don just said. Okay, so I'll check. And Mary's going to check on it. And okay. if, if 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 they're not there because Amy doesn't have them, I'll send them. Okay. Because yes, many more of them were approved. Oh, by the way, I'm sorry. There was a reason why. There is a reason why it's bringing up this whole thing about the, the meeting recordings. This is all, I'm gonna blame you for this, Judy. Because Judy, you got me taking this how to be a planning board member course. Thank you very much. And there is a whole thing about if you if you miss a meeting, as I did, you may recall, I missed a meeting. And that if you miss a meeting, uh, you are obliged in order to be able to participate in any discussions at future meetings that are related to something you missed, you're obliged to read the minutes, recordings, do whatever you can do to get yourself caught up. And that's so for special, some, that's for special permits. Just, are you sure? I, yes. It seemed to me just a general rule about whether it's public hearings. No, or, no, it's it's special permits. That happened with one of the zoning board meetings, okay. and it happened to be re they could yeah. recorded it just so the missing member could catch up on it. But of course, most of what they do is special permits. S special permits are required to have a supermajority. And they're also required that the people who vote participate or be at every meeting. I see. All right. So maybe I overgeneralized, but there's a there's a potential case where some of us, one of us, might miss a meeting where we need to access sure. the recording. So I just kind of wanted to establish a precedent yep. that there's a way to get to these recordings. Yep. Okay. I can okay. declare victory for one night. I'll move that we adjourn the meeting. Do I have a second? I will second that. Uh, roll call, Brent? Aye. Don, yes. Judy? Yes. Tom, yes. The meeting is adjourned. Okay. Thanks, folks. Thank you. Now, Good can, night. You, can you log off or does Sarah have to? No. Can you uh, I think if we all... Stop, it'll go away. Oh, there she's back. We just adjourned, Sarah. <laughs> I agree. Okay. Good night, there's this weird, there's this weird comment when you when you disappear. Like somebody says, oh no, or how did that I happen? Or something? Drop the SH word. So it's good y'all. Yeah. We, we missed no. that one. Didn't I haven't gone to the F word, so well, you Quite. can do all those as long as you don't do the N-word. <laughs> no. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Thank you. And thank you, Mary, as always. Thank Good you. Good night. Oh, Mary, stay on for a minute. Okay. Um, right. So we started the, the, the uh, meeting at uh, 7.05. Okay. Um, Hold on a moment, you... please. I'll go back. Okay. No, not 7. It's 5.05? I'm at 5, 5.05. Sorry.
Um, we did um, an ANR for um, Bill O'Bear. Noah. Bill O'Bear. O Bill, Bill O'Bear. Okay. Yep. Um, Judy moved that we approve it. Sarah seconded it, and it was unanimous. Okay. And that's about when you came in, so. All right. So we, we did open the, uh, the public hearing, but. Well, yeah, when, when I came in, you were you were just starting. So I, I figured you probably started it at 5.15 or 5. We started at 5.15, right. Like, yeah, because we yeah. A&R finished up it. That was, yeah, and that was the scheduled time. And, yeah. Okay. All right, see you next month. No, I'll see you at the end of the month. 23rd. Yep.